Okay, Salvo uh, uh, wants to know about the, um, the travel around Spain, about the, the concerts. Sure. How is the okay? Um, how well, going? okay. So we um, flew in. Um, what day? What day is this? This is Tuesday. The third. Yes, yeah, so we flew in on Thursday uh, into Barcelona, <coughs> and we're basically um, travelling around. Uh, the whole of the country, um, just in a car. The two of us and our friend Steve, who's along for the ride uh, with two guitars. And it's a very simple tour. Um, just two vo voices, two guitars and a glockenspiel. So it's very easy to do it. So it's almost um, a bit like a holiday as well. Okay. But but don't tell tell our wives that. <laughs> <laughs> bueno, llegaron el, el jueves a Barcelona y, y van a hacer un, una gira por toda España. Antes me han estado comentando también que van a visitar muchas ciudades, el Ferrol, Zaragoza, San Sebastián, Huelva, van a hacer de norte a sur. Y bueno, que se lo han tomado un poco como unas vacaciones porque es una gira sencilla, son dos voces, dos guitarras y... y ¿Os acompaña Steve? ¿Es con él? Sí, él es un amigo de Joe's y yo también lo he visto. Yo lo he visto a través de Joe. Steve vivió en Toronto y ahora vive en los Estados Unidos. Does a little work for us. Yeah. Uh -huh. <coughs> Helps How us. What kind of bit. work? Oh, you know, he s sells records, he, he carries things. Vende los discos, lleva el equipaje. Y bueno, ese tipo de cosas, ¿no? Bien. Sí, pues pregúntale cómo empezó la relación musical entre ellos. Por ejemplo, yo conozco a ellos dos como independientes en su grupo y en su proyecto, pero no sé cómo. ¿Cómo empezaba? He wants to know how how start how started the, our your relationship. Okay. Well, to the first part of it. Fair enough. Like you can, t I'll take it up to the, the to the meeting to the meeting, right? So uh, I was uh, working with a, a band uh, in Norway called I Was a King, uh, and I was producing an album myself and Robin Hitchcock were in Norway, uh, and they had asked a guy called Pat Berkery to play drums on the record. And Pat um, had played in Panice Brothers a few years back. So I got chatting with Pat and I told him that I'd moved to um, Canada. Mm -hmm. And Pat said, you know, Joe lives in Toronto. Um, and so myself and Joe had met a long time ago, a few years back. And, and I, didn't have, I didn't really know anyone in Canada. I'd only been there a short time. And so um, Pat passed on Joe's email address and I emailed Joe and then uh, we sort of, I told Joe I was coming back in a couple of weeks um, and we arranged to meet. And then we, we met, Norman came to my house and uh, we just, uh, mostly we just talked and we played a little music, I think that day, mm -hmm. not much, you know, just with guitars and then I had a solo show that was booked in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And by the end of us hanging out, I said, well, I'm playing next week. Do you want to come and be a, a surprise guest? <laughs> so Norman came and sat in, and we played songs. And uh, it was really fun. And then I think it was very easy. Right from then, <coughs> maybe even the first day we hung out, we said, let's do some recording. And so we did. And we just um, we started playing. And soon after we we began recording. Um, a friend of Norman's is a uh, music director for a film company. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> she was um, working on a film of uh, one of Nick Hornby's books it was being made into a film. Okay, I'm going to trust you. Sure. Um, <laughs> Bueno, lo primero, él estaba trabajando con alguien en Noruega, o Norway es del sí, grupo de... Ahí está una banda de Noruega, y, y bueno, uno de los componentes de Pernis Brothers, se, que estaba también trabajando en eso, pues le, al él comentarle que se iba a vivir a, a Toronto, a Canadá, pues le dijo que yo vivía allí, que se pusiera en contacto con él porque quizá podrían hacer algo bueno, y bueno, él inmediatamente lo hizo y, y obtuvo una respuesta positiva. Se vieron la primera vez en casa de Joe y estuvieron mayormente charlando y bueno, tocaron un poco así con las guitarras y tal. Y él le ofreció que fuera a verle a un concierto que daba la siguiente semana como invitado especial. Y, y bueno, a partir de ahí todo fue muy fácil y creo que empezaron ya a grabar cosas, ensayos y demás. Y, y continue, then, please. So 
did you tell them about the film? Uh, no. Okay, so a, a friend of Norman's okay. in London mm -hmm. is uh, works as a music director mm -hmm. in film, in film. and uh, they, she was working on the film of a Nick Hornby book, and Norman and I both know Nick, and. Uh, so she said, why don't you guys submit some songs? Maybe they'll use them for the film. Mm. And uh, so we wrote, and I think we might have re written and recorded four or five mm -hmm. songs for that. And uh, it turns out they didn't like any of them. Mm -hmm. They didn't use any of them. But we took a few that we liked, and we decided to just keep building from that. And we made an album. And my longtime friend, uh, Mike Belitsky, who <laughs> was the played drums in my band, the Pernice Brothers, mm -hmm. for, for years. Mm -hmm. uh, he lives around the corner from me in Toronto. Oh, okay. And uh, he joined our band, and it was very simple the way we just get together and record here and there, and we chipped away at the record. And okay. That's it. Empezaron también, mm -hmm. eh, cuando empezaron realmente a hacer algo juntos, algún, el primer proyecto que hicieron juntos fue para una película. Eh, ya que el, eh, Norman tiene una amiga que es directora, hace música para películas y bueno, iban a hacer una película. What, what's the name of the film? It's called so, so, uh, a, a Long yeah. Way Down, I think. A, a, long, a long Way Down. It's about um, five people who meet on New Year's Eve who, uh, uh, on a rooftop. They're all planning to commit suicide. Oh. And, uh, so, it's so a real, real cheery us. kind of uh, <laughs> movie. Um, but yeah. So okay. that, that's the, the, the book. Bien. Pues um, hicieron un, unas cuatro o cinco canciones para este proyecto y bueno a partir de ahí dijeron ¿por qué no hacemos un disco, no? Y ya también el, el batería de Pernis Brothers que vive al parecer muy cerquita en Toronto se unió al proyecto y bueno. I suppose I should add that Nick, Nick did like the songs, didn't he? Nick Hornby liked the songs. <laughs> Sadly, the people who were making the film of his book didn't like the songs. So, there you go. They didn't, they didn't like the songs? <laughs> yeah, I know. They, yeah. Yeah, well, they didn't use them. The production them. company, I think they're going to get, um, well, probably, you know. I don't know. Who's, who's um, famous at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you know what I mean? Because they like to, whatever. anyway. But, um, okay. And that, so that's, that, that was why we started. We actually... Um, recorded, um, I mean it really didn't cost as much money to make the album, uh, fuel for <laughs> Joe and Mike to drive out to my home mm -hmm. and we basically to record the record we um, moved all the furniture out of my living room mm -hmm. and then we set up the drum kit and <laughs> the guitars and we recorded it all at home so it's all done. At your home? Yeah, yeah, place. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So, uh, which was fun. And then actually we did a little recording. In fact, we recorded it at all of our homes, yeah. didn't we? And even at that, we spent too much money. Yeah. <laughs> oh, biscuits and coffee. <laughs> yeah. yeah, coffee. And, yeah. <laughs> No esperaban gastar mucho dinero en ello, pero bueno, está hablando de eso, de que no, no se han gastado mucho dinero en hacer el, en hacer el disco, que lo que han gastado ha sido en gasolina eh, la, eh, y café, café es lo que han gastado para, para hacer el disco, que lo han grabado en la casa de Norman, apartaron los muebles en el salón y allí mismo lo, lo han grabado. Coffee and on Friday's beer, of course. Ah, y cerveza, por supuesto. But, um, yeah, mostly coffee. But actually, Mayormente café. Um, actually, um, it's, it's been a good way to, to work in that, um, you know, we didn't go looking for a record deal. We started as a very small thing and we've kind of kept it that way, haven't we? Sure. You know, we've produced and manufactured the records ourselves in Canada for, for North America uh, and one little Indian. So you, pro you produce yourself? We did it all ourselves. All we, the you know, we paid for the manufacture of the records <coughs> ourselves. So okay. it's. So it's like a cottage industry thing, um, very okay. small. So we've started a, a record, ostensibly started a record label. Yeah. Okay. Um, sí, está comentando que bueno que ellos se encargan de hacer todo el proceso, ¿no? De, de producción, manufacturación y todo, ¿no? Que so you you think to start a record label or you you already have a, a new record label? I've had my own record label in okay. America okay. since 1999, okay. and uh, and. I said to Mike and Norman, let's put it out ourselves. It didn't take much convincing. They were right on board. They were, down, um, I'm going to say down with the idea. They <laughs> liked the idea. So <clears throat> soon, pretty soon into recording, we thought, let's put it, the record out ourselves, make our own label. So okay. it was easy. Él, bueno, comenta que tiene su propio sello desde 1999 allá en Estados Unidos, pero que... 
que bueno que sí que el, se va a formar un, un nuevo sello a partir de, de esta colaboración. Pero yo quería saber el, el proceso de composición de las canciones y cómo compones si compones juntos separados y cuando compones juntos cómo lo hacen. He wants to know about the, the process of the composition, about uh, the songs, if you compose uh, um, separately or together, how is the process? This time I brought in a lot of the songs, but they were just shapes, they weren't complete. And I think uh, we just whipped them into shape. We uh, whipped them into shape. Mm. I brought in most of the tunes on this record, but I hadn't written all of the words or even all of the... Um, you mean the lyrics? The lyrics, okay. all the lyrics. And the arrangements were very loose, not very... Um, uh, I'm trying to say it's early in the morning for me. It's too early. <laughs> <laughs> and together we... You know, just play them and put them into shape. Okay. Right. Él ha escrito la mayoría de, lo, de las letras y de los arreglos y demás, pero luego ponen en común todo lo que hacen y, y bueno, va surgiendo. A ver. No me gustaría darle las gracias por el concierto de anoche, fue un gran concierto. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you. Understand. Yeah. 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 Okay. Y yo estaba viéndolo y yo también soy músico y hago canciones y soy el típico espectador que está observando los acordes que están tocando y ese tipo de cosas uh -huh. y me da esa envidia de son dos personas capaces de hacer unas melodías geniales uh -huh. quería preguntarles eh, si tienen alguna fórmula secreta vale es un musician as well and he's the the kind of um, Uh, you know the kind of person that uh, goes to a concert and uh, you know uh, see all the arrangements and all, all the chords that you play and analyze. You know the, the thing. Sure. He wants to know if you have a secret, a secret yeah, yeah, uh, we, formula to 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 play and to uh, to make so beautiful and great songs. Well, yeah. that's kind, but I think um, we talk about keep it simple. Keep and, it simple. And a life of torment. <laughs> and a life of torment, okay. Hacer algo sencillo, mantener sencillas las cosas y una vida tormentosa, una vida complicada. You know, we, we've been playing these, uh, since we've started playing, uh, we've, and we've, you know, we've, um, we've the, the whole thing has gotten much quieter and much simpler. We've really stripped it down and we've gone, it with, gets with getting quieter and quieter, isn't it? I mean, it's, um, Uh, and again, with the, we've stopped using picks on the guitars, really, haven't we? We've got, yeah, that's because we lost them, but we didn't want to buy any new ones. Um, I think, oh, go on. no, no, the, um, I think, based on our music, that Norman and I both uh, like melodies a lot and harmonies. We like, I'd say, the singing, the melody, harmony, and um, are, are very important. You know, and and I think uh, most important. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we're trying to, in my mind at least, we haven't really spoken about it too much, um, trying to strip it down to just uh, so the melodies and the harmonies are the focal point of the songs. You understand? The most, yeah. Yes. To and focus so, the, the, yeah, the most um, attention on, uh, yeah, on this. Yeah. Mayor, is it Mayor? Yeah. No. Nice. <laughs> yes. In English, <laughs> it's like most important to focus on that. Okay. So But the I other instruments are kind of, sorry, and, it, and in most cases it only takes one uh, rhythmic instrument to carry the song as long as you can, you know, but the singing is most important. The singing. The lyrics. The, oh, no, the lyrics, but the, the singing. Lyrics, but the, the, the sound, the, the melodies song. and harmonies. Okay. Pero, bueno, para ellos lo más importante son la, las melodías, las armonías y, y hacer una composición buena en ese sentido, que concentrar toda su atención en que, en que la melodía y, no sé, sea lo, más, lo principal en la canción. Se trata de eso, más o menos. I always found 
that when someone is playing acoustic alone, a guitar, just a voice and a guitar, uh -huh. for me, I don't respond when that person is trying, trying to make it into a rock concert okay. when it's one guy. So in a way to um, uh, highlight, how do I say highlight? To uh, focus again uh -huh. on the melody and the singing. Okay. You know? No entiende cuando una persona toca un acústico solo e intenta hacer rock cuando estás tocando en acústico tú solo con una guitarra, ¿no? Que intentas hacer ruido y hacer rock, ¿no? Él cree que, es, que la melodía es, yeah. es lo más importante. De, de, a kind of una yeah, there's a kind of strange thing that um, doesn't always work, but very often if you play very quietly, people listen more. You know, if you, the quieter you get, people tend to they, they they will go become become quiet because I don't know they just sort of so um so the, you're, you you would think that the to make people listen you would play louder but it doesn't work that way it's bizarre I think you play loud it kind of puts people oh, too loud you or know? they think now I can talk or they can no talk. one else can yeah. hear me yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which, piensan que cuando una persona toca demasiado fuerte la, 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 la audiencia pierde la atención, ¿no? Que lo importante es tocar tranquilo y eso gana, así te ganas la atención del público, ¿no? Y que la gente está más, está más, más atenta a, a las canciones y al concierto. Secreto, bueno, secreto, eh, la respuesta final que eh, van a poder decir que para hacer buenas canciones hay que ser simple al final, ¿no? Quizás. Eh, quiet. I think, tranquilo, más bien. Uh, so your final answer is uh, to make a good song. A good, uh, <laughs> the, the secret is to okay. be quiet and simple. No. I, you, you, you know, simple, I, I, simple, simple. Well, I think so. Simple but melodies. To be honest with you, I mean, I, I don't even think about it. I don't think about it. I don't, and I don't think. Uh, I think. Um, I, I don't think. I, I, I rarely feel that I've written a good song. You know, I know. I don't I mean. You know. Uh, you write songs, um, and then you kind of think, okay, that's that seems okay, um, and then you kind of move on to something else yeah. because uh, the the I think maybe when you create, so for me anyway, I'm sure it's the same for you that maybe the initial creation, the initial period of writing a song is the most exciting part, or or, or at least you can enjoy the song uh, at that point, but then after that, it, it, it kind of becomes work in a way, mm. yeah. you know. Um, uh, and so you always have to write a new song, you know. You always have to do something new because you can. You because it's the, the, the because that's gone. That feeling is gone. When you have you to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, piensa que el momento de creación es el más interesante, ¿no? Es siempre el más el más bonito, el más interesante para ella. Que luego ya se trata de trabajo, porque ya luego solo tienes que tocar las canciones que has compuesto, ¿no? Que por eso siempre están pensando en hacer nuevas canciones, porque es el momento más más interesante el de crear. ¿Cuál es el primer momento de empezar con qué empieza? Wait. He wants to know about everything. <laughs> uh, how, uh, so he wants to know about um, what's the first point uh, to to um, to make a song. The starting point. Yeah. Well, uh, for me, I just play. I, I the last couple of weeks, I haven't played much music for whatever reason, but usually I play guitar or sit at my piano um, every day okay. because I, it's really a lot of fun. For me, it's not, it's not work. I never, even recording is, recording is so exciting to me. You might write a song that's just on an acoustic guitar, but for me, and I imagine it's the same for Norman, um, I'm already thinking, this instrument here, this could have strings, it strings. could have horns. <laughs> so you start to, I don't think about that while I'm writing the song, but after I feel like it's done, um, then I'm thinking about how to record it, you know? And, uh, but, the, but as far as the initial uh, inspiration, for me, I feel like every song is an accident. Like, I don't think I have to write this song right now. It's no. Exactly, it's just exactly the same for me. Exactly I, the same. I sit down and I play, 
and then I'll hear a melody, and then it just grows. Wait, you can speak English? You can speak English anywhere, but... Sorry, but we have to translate. No, no, it's good. Because of the camera. Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm joking. The audio is on YouTube. Joke. Okay, it's okay. You know, the, uh, if you want to, to, to make the answer in English, and then uh, translate oh, in no. Spanish, it's okay for me. I was joking, oh, it was uno problem. No, if you say in English and in Spanish, you know? Yeah. Well, but you have to translate as well, okay? Mm. Okay, well, so the, 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 I would say that it happens instantaneously. The melody happens instantaneously. You don't, you know, um, you'll be playing the guitar. It's, I'm sure it's exactly the same. It's, there are accidents, you know, you play it around for a little while, and then all of a sudden something appears, a melody or something in the guitar, and you have a melody that can, you know, you'll go through various combinations where you, you noodle. <laughs> and then it just happens, and then you have a, a starting point. But for me, actually, when that when that happens for me, I get a lot of the song in that piece. So I'll get the verse, and then that will, will lead to the chorus or the same. You know, I, as soon as I've written the first part, the the rest of the song, I know what the rest of the song is going to be like. Would you agree that if it doesn't all come very quickly? It's hard to get that it's last the, if it bit. It doesn't come all quickly. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you get ninety percent of it done and you still have to think about something, yeah, then it's oftentimes some... those aren't the greatest of your songs. That's exactly. You know, it's not going to work then. Yeah, yeah, because you can't. You can't. You've got to feel good about the what you've created. Okay, going to translate. It's a long. Bueno. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Él ha comentado que para él tocar no es, no es trabajo, él toca todos los días la guitarra en su casa, es un placer, es un juego, para él es algo muy entretenido y, y a raíz de tocar todos los días, ¿no? lo, que, lo, que, lo que he entendido que bueno, las composiciones vienen. ¿no? Eh, ha hablado de que las canciones son como accidentes en realidad, ¿no? se suceden como accidentes, que de repente ha sucedido que ha compuesto una, una canción, pero no... Realmente no, no hace una intención de voy a componer esta canción así, voy a pensar esta... Sino que simplemente va sucediendo, va apareciendo, ¿no? Y bueno, Norman ha expresado que también está de acuerdo en todo, que para él es lo mismo. Y bueno, por último... The last thing that you said, sorry, it's... Uh... I can't remember. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. Sale del tirón, tirón de una continuación, a componer no le sale del tirón que tira la... Oh, yeah. Gracias. A John ya puede pasar lo mismo, díselo. A John... De los Beatles, ¿no? Oh, vale, vale. He said that uh, John and Paul from the Beatles uh, happens the same, you know? Yeah, you think of this, this song uh, yesterday, Paul McCartney, the story is... He wakes up in the middle of the rain, calls it scrambled eggs, because he, he, he knows the scrambled eggs, so I'd love to see your hairy legs, you know, and it's just nonsense, but it, it helps him with the melody. I heard about this song, that he, he composed a song uh, during a WC session. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure he's doing it all the time, but that would be... During what? A WC session in the toilet. Oh. <laughs> But um, I mean, that, that's Paul McCartney. He's a genius. It was probably so all bloody. That was I the way. Young. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer young. I prefer young. Pero ayer también durante el concierto, además de sus canciones, tocaron una versión de Sandy Day y hicieron una versión de los Bobby Twins. Entonces, me gustaría saber hasta qué punto consideran que el bagaje de un músico es importante a la hora de componer, porque hay 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 varias varias perspectivas. Hay músicos que prefieren aislarse de, 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 la, de, de su influencia y trabajar muy independientemente desde, desde el punto de vista mental a la hora de componer, pero hay otros músicos que reflejan muy bien sus influencias. Y yo creo que ellos no las esconden, porque las, las muestran en sus conciertos, en sus canciones también. Y, ¿qué, bagaje, o sea, ¿Qué importancia le dan a, a, al bagaje, a su al al background eh, musical a la hora de, 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 su, de hacer una canción? Suyo, ¿no? Al propio. Claro, efectivamente, claro. Al suyo. Mm. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's a difficult question. <laughs> How important do you have? Uh, do you to? A ver. ¿Qué importancia le da un poco su propio background? Background, background. Sí. Yo creo que yo lo he entendido. Yo. A little bit. Uh, mm. You want to describe our, the background or the influences? Yes. Is that kind of thing? Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, for me. As I get older, 
I realized that my earliest influences, the, the, the music that meant the most to me as a young person, as a child, n never goes away. Like the, the earliest influences are the ones that really put a mark, that really was strong on me. Like, uh, of course, the Beatles. Um, I've always loved the songs of Jimmy Webb, and I still, you know, I do. And, uh, and uh, who else? I mean, so, so many, but I'd say like Jimmy Webb and the Beatles for me are the two greatest influences on, on my music. Para yo, las dos grandes influencias son los Beatles y Jimmy Webb. Y bueno, desde, y que dice que no, para él las influencias son importantes, las influencias musicales desde su infancia, que para él han, han sido un sello que no, que es imborrable, ¿no? Que perdurará siempre, ¿no? Todos los grupos que le han influenciado. And I think that applies actually for every generation. You think about 60s musicians and their obsession with music from the 20s and 30s, when they, or, you know, or 40s or whatever, when they were children. Um, <laughs> and, you know, um, there's a certain nostalgia for your childhood that everyone has. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves the music that was around when they were a kid. If you're born in the 80s, you like 80s music, you know. <laughs> I mean, it, you, it's know, it's, you know, because you have a nostalgic uh, connection with it. And therefore, I mean, we all want to be children again, don't we? You know, it's like a, it's life is hard, and when you're a kid, it, you know, gen, you know, generally speaking. Yeah. And I think um, so. I think people are influenced by the music of their childhood, and you're right; it never goes away. I, st I still love that music. It's still the music that I go back to. Bueno, que la, sí. Norman dice que habla un poco de para los músicos de los 60. Su influencia sería a lo mejor la música de los años 40 o los años 30, tal. Bueno, habla un poco de que las, las influencias musicales que se tienen durante la infancia son importantes, que, que, que lo mismo, ¿no? Comparte la misma opinión, que es un sello que, que, que siempre se mantiene ahí, ¿no? Para todos, ¿no? Bueno, um, my son, who is uh, siete, siete años, uh, but mm -hmm. I made sure when he was old enough to understand music, maybe, what do you, three, four, when you mm -hmm. start to really listen, David Bowie, Bob Dylan, <laughs> <What>? The Beatles, <laughs> Duke Ellington. <laughs> I made sure that he listened to those right off the bat because I wanted to. Bueno, ha hablado de que su hijo de de siete años escucha desde que tiene tres años está escuchando a los grupos que ha mencionado: David Bowie, Bob Dylan, Bob Dylan, Beatles, Duke Ellington, Duke Ellington, y bueno que que está seguro que que cuando sea mayor pues va a seguir disfrutando de esa música. Spice Girls. Spice Girls. No, me viene Y quizá otros. Y yo, una pregunta: si, eh, ¿cómo hacen para llevar 20 años que van a cumplir, 30 años que van a cumplir, y no llegar a repetirse? Vale. Porque a mi tío todo el mundo me repito. ¿Cómo se hace para to stay on, on the stages and playing music and creating music during 20 or 30 years and don't repeat any melody or any... Oh, well, I wouldn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the song will be familiar, too. For me, I'll be like, I'll think, oh, I like that melody, but I know it from somewhere. And then I, six records ago, oh, yeah, <laughs> I've used that already. Yeah. Que a veces empieza a tocar y dice, me suena esta melodía, ¿no? Y, y resulta que la tocó seis discos atrás en, en otro disco, yeah. en otra canción. But you know, I suppose musical, in terms of being on stage, we've only been doing this as a musical performance for a year. So this is relatively new. I mean, Joe has been with Pernice Brothers, solo shows, other things. I've been with Teenage Fan Club and other things. But this is a new musical sort of thing in a way. So that that's, you know, yeah. so... Um, so uh, um, I suppose over the years you'll, you work with different musicians and it's always new. You always have new songs to play. And it's fun touring. It's a great, it's a, you know, it's a, one of the best things about... When you're, it's funny because um, when you're touring you think, oh, I'd really love to make a record. And then when you're making a record, you think, I can't wait to tour. Yeah. <laughs> because they're both good, you know, you've got, you got a lot of satisfaction from both things. So. In this is... Oh, oh, sorry, you didn't translate it's okay. it. <laughs> Eh, bueno, que ha comentado eso, que, que en realidad la, la magia de hacer algo nuevo siempre está en, en que tocas con músicos nuevos, ¿no? Durante los años de tu carrera pues vas tocando con, con nuevos músicos, vas tocando con, con nuevas bandas y, y es la forma de hacer siempre algo nuevo también, ¿no? 
pero... Y que también, bueno, comenta que eso, que cuando estás grabando un, un disco, pues quieres irte de, de tour para enseñarlo. Cuando estás de tour dices, tenemos que grabar algo nuevo. Y entonces es algo que siempre se está retroalimentando, ¿no? Que siempre quieres hacer algo nuevo. Yo creo que ninguna de las bandas se repite, ni Tenéis Fan Club, ni Penny Brothers, pero siempre hay un sello propio que se observa. Siempre hay unos cambios de acordes, muy, porque con Tenéis Fan Club sí. hay un hay como unos patrones que no son repetitivos pero es muy característico del grupo ¿no? mm. They think that uh, he thinks that uh, uh, in, in Teenage Fan Club and Penny's Brothers you don't repeat but uh, there's a, like a stamp of, uh, in yeah. the melodies you know, in the sound of Yeah, we don't, yeah, I don't think either of us have gone looking for a new sound with every new album. This is our electronic album, or <laughs> I mean, I, because to me, I, I think it's, it's all about the song. You know, we, you're writing song, we write songs. We don't, you know, um, it's some a lot of music is style over content, you know, um, and and so people, so I don't know, people are more interested in in the. Um, And making something sound new, and that's fine. I mean, a lot of, yeah. But for us, as writers, I think we it's always been melody driven. Um. Bueno, que como músicos no pretenden como romper con algo nuevo siempre, ¿no? En plan, vamos a hacer un disco de electrónica, ¿no? Y tal, sino que lo único son es, son escritores de canciones y compositores y, y quieren hacer canciones y de lo que ellos Can I say something? That's actually very often something that people will say to us as a criticism, which I, I don't accept that as criticism. You know, I don't think there's a, you know, it's, um, we don't have to invent a new language every time we make a record. Yeah. That's not our responsibility. You, you know, um, but that's it's definitely something that people would say if they were going to say, oh yeah, those guys, they've been making the same record for 20 years. Well, I, I don't accept that, you know, but people will say that. But, What we do. Sí, que ahora hay mucha gente que, que critica mucho eso, ¿no? Llevan 20 años haciendo lo mismo, tal. Pero bueno, que ellos no, 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 no son los responsables de crear ahora un nuevo lenguaje ni una nueva forma de expresarse. No tienen esa responsabilidad, solo son compositores. I drink the same coffee every day. I still <laughs> like it. Café. It's a good cup of coffee. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yo soy eh, un gran fan de los Beatles y de, especialmente de Paul McCartney, porque mm -hmm. creo que es el y que existe, ¿no? Bueno, <risa> lo que pasa es que no. Bueno, yo pienso que es su último. Es un robot, no. Me parece que es su último. A mí su último disco me ha gustado. A mí tampoco. Precisamente por eso que estáis hablando, porque sí. yo creo que se quiere salir tanto de, sí. de donde está en casilla un poco el creador de melodías muy bonitas, pero realmente los, los fans de Paul que compran un disco de él. Hombre, yo ya no exijo un disco entero de melodías increíble, por lo menos tres o cuatro, pero el, la pena es que es el último que por lo menos para mí. Y entonces yo creo que no sé si quiere ser demasiado moderno o salirse de donde lo tenemos encasillado para... Y para mí eso no es efectivo, claro. He's speaking about the same thing uh, and the, the example, in, uh, putting an example in Paul McCartney. Mm -hmm. Because uh, he's a great fan of Paul McCartney, because mm -hmm. he thinks he's... Uh, The, the biggest uh, melody is creator of all of time. He's, he's pretty but, great, uh, yeah. But today, <laughs> nowadays, but nowadays he thinks that uh, he maybe Paul is in this way that you spoke before. Uh, he wants to to do something different, and he's um, yeah, totally. I mean, maybe I, the, he thinks that his la, uh, la, uh, sorry, latest uh, record. Yeah. It's not that very... Sure. I mean, the guy, the guy is in his 70s now. He's been making music for a long time. Yeah. And he's produced a lot of great music. And yeah, I think there is a bit of Paul McCartney that has to be... He's all, always has to be Paul McCartney, you know? Yeah. He's not, he isn't a normal person anymore. He's one of the Beatles, you know? Yeah. That, that carries with it a lot of responsibility. And maybe he thinks that he has to be relevant. For me, he's done enough. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> one of those records was... Probably enough, but maybe he feels that he, maybe it makes him feel uh, that he, he's engaging with young people or something. Uh, uh, maybe you know. Yeah, I think that's speak. Yeah. Good. You finish then. I'll add. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but you have to speak. I will. I will. Okay. No, eh, opina lo mismo, que quizá para Paul McCartney ya está bien, que porque sea Paul McCartney y sea uno de los Beatles y tal, parece que siempre tiene que estar haciendo lo mejor y demás, pero pero piensa que igual también ya se ha acabado su 
su momento, ¿no? Y quizás cree que con este disco a lo mejor quiere captar público más joven o algo así. Por eso lo he hecho así. When we recorded, when we made the record, our, our new record, um, I don't think we one time, not once, maybe when we were mixing, but we never said, oh, people are going to love this, or this is, hopefully we can do, this would be great if we could reach a bigger audience. Not one time, because I think we're both old enough and we've done it enough that, you know, it's, you should try to make your best art. I don't want to sound too precious, but you should try to make the best record you can make that uh, pleases you. And then if you put it out and other people enjoy it, great. If they don't, well, so what? So we, I agree with Norman that maybe Paul McCartney's trying to stay relevant or you know, appeal to young people. We just, we don't have that problem. We no. don't, you know what I mean? We just Not make anymore. music. <laughs> well, and, that, and you know, it becomes, a, oh, go ahead, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Nada, opina lo mismo que Norman, que, que quizá él está intentando capturar, captar nuevos públicos entre la gente más joven y demás con este grupo, pero que, que bueno, que no es, eh, que para él ya no es relevante tener que hacer eso, ¿no? Porque no lo necesita y, y que bueno, que lo importante cuando haces música es que si luego el disco lo escucha la gente y lo disfruta, bien, ¿no? Si no, bueno, lo siento, pero eso es lo importante, ¿no? Que hagas lo que tú quieras hacer, ¿no? Para que... I, th I think a problem, or not a problem, but when I signed a, a record contract when I did years ago, it was pretty, I got very lucky, didn't do a lot of work to get signed, mm -hmm. didn't tour, nothing. It was very simple. Mm -hmm. The record company liked a record that I made and they said, we want to sign you. Great. So I never was uh, influenced. Uh, what's the word I'm going to say? It was never, I never tried to go get a record deal, right? But a lot of bands, and I don't blame them, but I, I know a lot of my friends who are in bands their whole purpose, record contract, rec I gotta have a record deal. To, in, in a way, back then I think people saw um, getting signed to a record label as validation, like you're important now. Yeah, yeah. And it, that just, for me, um, I never had to... First, for you, Go. maybe first is uh, play music and make music. And yeah, but I know it's easy for me to say that because getting a record contract was very easy. Yeah. So, okay. uh, and I forgot what I was going to say, but <laughs> I forgot the rest. No, no, not, not because of you, just oh. because I'm, my brain is old. Okay. <laughs> Do you know no. what I'm trying to get at? Yeah, absolutely know what you're trying to get at. Can you yeah. finish it? Well, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I think it was a similar thing for us in that we, um, our main goal was to make a record. We were really excited about doing that. Um, we scraped together money and we didn't have a, a we weren't looking teenage to... Teenage fan club. Yeah, teenage fan club. We weren't looking to get a big record deal. We didn't think that was realistic. We didn't really w want that. You know, we wanted the, just the idea of making a record. Um, we had all, two of us had already put a record out with a very small label in Scotland. Um, and we thought, well, we could do this ourselves. Um, uh, but I think what Joyce thinks is a lot of bands will continually demo and demo. And we kind of thought that that was a waste of time. We thought, okay, write songs, just release them, just do it. Then, you, then you're kind of forced at that point to move on, which means you can develop as an artist. If you are c continually just working in the same thing all the time and never moving on from that, you, it's, it's a, you know, it seems like a, a, a waste of time. Yeah. Yeah. Bueno, yo yeah. he hablado de que, bueno, que para él fue fácil, él, cuando firmaron con la primera discográfica fue muy fácil, entonces él no puede... Pero lo que ha querido decir un poco es que ve que algunos artistas su único objetivo es firmar con una compañía de, red, de discos para, para empezar ya ¿no? esa vía más profesional, digamos, o más pública y su objetivo es ese, ¿no? cuando en realidad bueno, hacer música es más importante para, 
para... You want to say something? I remember what I was trying to say. Okay, continue. I think you're, you're doomed, you're sunk, you're, it's over. If you are trying to change your style to fit into a fashion, to get a record okay. deal. So, and it happens, and I don't, I don't think less of a band that might do that, because I had good friends who one month they sounded like Nirvana, the next year they sounded like, you know, a country band, you know, like it, <laughs> just trying to chase the fashion. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so I think if you do that, yeah, you're, it it's over. Yeah. Bueno, que eso, que habla de eso, de que hay bandas que, que intentan sonar eh, de diferentes maneras, ¿no? Solo para conseguir ese contrato discográfico. Un día suenan como Nirvana, otro día suenan Country, y bueno, pierden un poco la autenticidad ¿no? y la identidad. Y, y que si optas por ese camino, pues piensas que, que estás perdido, ¿no? Y eso no, no te va a traer nada. Porque si tú, he encontrado en cosas que he hecho, si no pursue, you know, pursue, uh, follow yeah, the thing I love that I would never, I would quit making music. I would have quit years ago because if you have to love it, you have to love to make music and, and you have to you love make. to, excuse and me, and what you make. If, exactly. If you don't love it, it's the, it's probably, it could be one of the worst uh, businesses to be in, <laughs> one of the worst jobs you could imagine if you don't love writing songs and making music. Mm. Habla un poco de la autenticidad, ¿no? Respecto a cada uno consigo mismo, ¿no? Que tiene que amar lo que tienes que amar lo que tú hagas, ¿no? Porque si no está, estarás perdido, ¿no? Tienes que, que amar tus creaciones, ¿no? Y hacer lo que tú quieras hacer. Eso es lo más importante para él en su y, música. Me importa mucho que la gente copie sus discos, quiero decir, que se lo bajen de internet, que copien el vinilo. ¿Os importa? A ver, vamos a cambiar de palabra. He wants to know if you mind a lot uh, that the people download your records from internet and you mean, don't buy the music. Well, sure. Just like, uh, you yeah. mind? Well, yeah, and, uh, yes. What's uh, your opinion about this? Uh, I say, you go ahead, you go first. Sure. Um, yeah, you I mean, um, I suppose it's, you know, we, like everyone else, have to pay our rent and pay the heating bills and buy food, you know? And, uh, and to, so, so what, what's happening, I think, um, if, if people are, because people are downloading so much, it's restricting people from pursuing music as an occupation, because you can't afford to do it as an occupation. Mm -hmm. And you have to have another job, which means that you can't tour, yeah. and you can't go to the studio. Um, and, uh, no. and so, yeah, I mean, it does affect us. It's affect, it affects every musician, because, uh, because uh, record labels will now give smaller deals, they won't. You know, you get one album deal if it's if it's not happening by one album, dropped. Mm. You know, the advances are much smaller, um, and musicians are making less money, and it make, makes it harder to make music. And then, <coughs> co companies like Spotify are making a lot of money, but um, they they have already done deals with major re record labels. You know, so there's a lot of stuff happening in the background. Uh, which is uh, uh, which is punishing musicians. So it's almost like we're going back to the early part of the 20th century when musicians didn't make any money, you know. Mm. And uh, and it's so it, it does affect us. Um, uh, and of, of course, there's I think um, hopefully in the next few years um, uh, people will be able to tighten up the the uh, people's access to downloading music for free, but uh, one more thing. Yes. I, was, I wouldn't expect someone to come and uh, uh, someone to come and fix the plumbing in my home and, uh, and not pay them, you know? Someone so if someone comes say to my home and says, uh, say, oh, my toilet's not working. Uh -huh. uh, some guy's gonna get, take it, put, his, put his hand down my toilet. I, I'm gonna pay him, right, so, <laughs> you know? <laughs> what we do is put our hands down your toilet. <laughs> Okay. Él piensa que, bueno, que, que igual que compramos comida, pagamos alquileres y demás, ¿no? Para vivir también tendríamos que pagar por la música que escuchamos, un trabajo que hacen otras personas y, bueno, así en resumidas cuentas. Parece para él que, está, que estemos volviendo a, a los principios del siglo XX cuando los músicos eran pobres todo el rato, ¿no? Y que, bueno, que todo esto acarrea que los contratos cada vez, cada vez sean más... Mmm, más pequeños tengan menos ventajas, sean menos 
no sé, que los músicos ganen menos dinero, que un músico tenga que buscarse un trabajo fuera de lo que es su ocupación principal, que es hacer música, ¿no? Y, y eso pues le quite tiempo de su ocupación, ¿no? Y afecta, realmente afecta que, que la gente se descargue música. I'd like to also say that um, people who say that musicians are being greedy because they want to hang on to yes. copyright are, are, are equating people like us with massive corporations like Warner Brothers or you know we are, we are not like we are we don't have that we're not big corporate structures no. we are you know we are like small if you want to compare it to business <coughs> we are very small businesses we're small shopkeepers you know mm. uh, fighting against supermarkets you know so we should not be punished because you know major labels and film companies have exploited people over in, in the past you know it's that's that's not our fault so but people, you know, downloading the way is punishing us for something that we're not responsible for. Claro. Un poco, piensa que es como una una consecuencia de, de, de un trabajo que han hecho las grandes majors, las grandes compañías discográficas y cinematográficas, ¿no? Que, que han construido así esta industria y bueno, que nosotros somos los eh, somos los que re, estamos recibiendo eso y, y bueno. Lo, los que usamos, los que estamos descargándonos la música, ¿cómo se dice? Es que no me sale la palabra, perdón. Exactamente, eso es. Que, que bueno, que no, no es su culpa y que ellos son un poco también, para nada pertenecen a grandes compañías, ¿no? que dentro de esta industria son los que están más abajo, ¿no? Pero bueno. And I think what a lot of the, uh, people, the public, you know, most people don't understand that If someone is signed to has a record contract and they sell a record, the, the, the record gets sold, the band might make, you know, 80 cents, like half a euro, yeah. or half an auto yeah. for each record. Yeah. So you're only making that much anyway. Yeah. And so if someone downloads the music for free, you're not even getting your 80 cents or 70, whatever it is, 75 cents for every record sold. So, you know, if you sold 10,000 records, that's $7,500. It's not a ton of money, but it's still money. Now that's, you don't even get that, no. you know, if someone downloads the music for free. Yeah. Bueno, está hablando de que si alguien se baja la música gratuita, de una forma pirata, ¿no? Gratuitamente, no, no está contribuyendo ni siquiera a esos 75 centavos o medio euro que, que está ganando por cada descarga, ¿no? que, que, que ganaría por cada descarga legal. Entonces, bueno, es, es una cantidad de dinero pequeña, pero es dinero ¿no? que, que ellos como artistas deben, deben recibir. Y para poner un punto en esto, para elaborar un poco más, las grandes record companies are always trying to take more and more from the artists. The record companies, if there's, they want the pie, they want to shrink you down to getting even less, right? The, the record company wants to maximize the money they make, right? Mm -hmm. So they're doing things all the time to, uh, to decrease the amount of money that the artist gets. So you might only, you might get a tiny royalty and then if someone steals, uh, downloads the record, mm -hmm. you don't even get that. You know, so it doesn't really inspire people to to uh, to um, get into making music. You might say, oh, I'll, I'll be a painter or I'll be, make a, you know, I'll get a job in something else because I have to eat. Yeah. Sí, bueno, habla que, que la, las grandes compañías son también, creo que, que lo que dice es que también son culpables, ¿no? Porque en realidad cada vez hacen que el artista reciba cada vez menos, ¿no? Es... Es un poco la, la finalidad es que ellos cada vez ganen más con el trabajo que hacen ellos, ¿no? Y el artista, que es el creador, cada vez gane menos. Un poco por ahí, porque no sé hasta qué punto es bueno, por ejemplo, ese caso interno, para que se conozca más el grupo, porque al fin y al cabo, donde el grupo gana es en la gira, quiero decir, ¿no? En conciertos y tal, porque el beneficio de un disco que vende la compañía para el grupo es muy poco dinero, como tal. Sin embargo, internet o el boca a boca incluso le pasa una cinta a un compa, creo que hace que el grupo se conozca más. Yo, tienes tan clave, yo conocí así, una cinta de Una grabada. cinta, claro, 
que os interesa que se os dé a conocer, o sea, que se amplíe un poco, ¿no? O sea, ¿internet es un problema para ellas, creo? Yo creo que no, no, no. Que todo lo contrario, ¿no? Que como que les vendría, les vendría bien que la gente se bajara las canciones para eso, ¿no? O sea, pues porque nuestro público se va a comprar el disco. He ¿sí? thinks that uh, internet is a good way for your kind of music, an exclusive with an exclusive audience, you know, uh, to uh, prom prom your, your music you know, sure, you know, around the world. Believe because me, it's an yeah. easy way to, maybe f in, in Facebook, maybe I put a song on sure, your wall sure. of uh, Teenage Fan Club, and you know, and it's a good way to... The, listen, the internet's amazing. It's amazing yeah. that you can have access to music. Uh, I, I, I agree, I think it's fantastic. Um, and, uh, and yeah, people, you can, you know, you... Uh, in terms of uh, people uh, all over the planet now having access to your music, you go to a central place and it's there. Information about, about your music is there. That's that's true. I I, I don't disagree. Um, but in, in terms of uh, generating revenue for a band, well, yeah, you, you can you can do it. But it's I mean we're distributing our record ourselves. You know we'll be putting them in the mailers, certainly in North America, and cap for the Canadian distribution. We'll do that ourselves. So. Uh, of course, but that 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 um, uh, you, you know um, we we won't be selling thousands and thousands of records. You know, it's um, the profit margins are still tight, uh, and but I, I I think the internet's a fantastic. Yeah, it, it's because he thinks that uh, for you uh, the most maybe the most uh, money that you can earn is is in a tour, not uh, well, selling yeah, not selling sure, yeah. records. So. But but that is a maybe that this is a problem for uh, you said Bruce, Bruce's printing or Spice Girl for, for yeah, example. Sure, yeah, sure, it's, it's uh, different. We're playing like mainstream, with, yeah, you know, artists. Yeah. But sure. for you, maybe it's not a well, problem. Or well, well, but I think it, but it, it's it's it is a problem because any record that because we we wouldn't sell massive amounts of record, but any sale that we lose affects what we can do. It affects us because we we can't tour. To, you know, touring actually again. Well, you know, you, can, you don't make a great deal of money from touring. It's, you know, it's, um, Especially with a band. People, yeah. people say, oh, well, if your music is free and it's out there, everyone learns about you and they'll come to your show. Well, the, it costs a lot of money to bring a band, like to say Spain or yeah. from America. It costs thousands and thousands and thousands. Every flight, four hotel rooms, rent a vehicle, rent gear, visas, it, it takes a, t a, a lot of money for a band to go on the road. Yeah. And we're lucky because it's just two of us. And, and so for someone, for us, it's okay. It's, you know, it's, it's pretty good. But if you're a band, forget it. You can't tour. So if they say, oh, it makes your music more popular so you'll get paid more at shows, it doesn't work that way. Unless you're huge, if you're already like uh, Lady Gaga, well, sure, give the music away, and you're going to sell out every concert for a million dollars a night anyway. So it's almost like the records don't mean much. It's uh, you know, it only free music as promotion for shows only works if you're big. Está hablando sobre que el, el, el tema de este que comentamos quizá funcione para grandes artistas, ¿no? Porque realmente no está de acuerdo en que si tú lanzas toda tu música por internet de forma gratuita, eso te va a hacer de que la gente te conozca y luego te traigan de gira a su país o demás, ¿no? Porque una gira cuesta muchísimo dinero, ¿no? En temas de pues billetes de avión, eh, habitaciones de hotel, visas, toda esa historia y, y bueno, esa no es fácil, para ellos sí porque son solo dos, pero no es fácil traer una banda, una gran banda a un país a tocar. Entonces eso quizá funcione para grandes artistas que, bueno, grandes artistas en el sentido de que manejan mucho dinero, no porque sean mejores artistas. Es un shit business. <risa> 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 parece que no están muy contentos tampoco los servicios de streaming, ¿no? Como Spotify o Deezer o... You, you don't seem to be very happy with the streaming services and the deals they make with the record companies. Sure, yeah, I, I don't... I, I think that... I mean, I, I'm hopeful that that will, be, that will sort itself out in terms of, the, the, you know, peop, musicians being dealt with fairly. And I know that uh, musicians are starting to lobby against. I think we do have to get together. I think it's important because 
what is happening? And I, I, I do believe that um, a company like Spotify, they're just building that company up. They're, they don't make a profit at the moment, but they will be selling that company very soon. And let's not kid ourselves, that, is, that company is there to make a lot of money. And if you look at the, the research that's been done so far, and I think that I've seen some counter arguments, but it does appear that musicians really don't make very much money at all from that particular streaming service. Now, I do think that streaming is uh, the way that it's going to go. We will be streaming things in future, so that's fine. That's just the, the reality of living and making music now. But I, I certainly think that it needs to be, a, the musicians need to have a fairer deal. Now, if you think about something like uh, YouTube now, uh, you can look at lots of music videos on YouTube. Uh, if you looked at a music video on YouTube four years ago, you would click on the link and the music video would appear. You do that now and you'll watch a commercial for 30 seconds. Yeah. So YouTube are making lots of money. So anyway, uh, so what they have to do is make sure that some of that money, a fair amount, uh, is, is given to musicians. To the they have to pass it on to us. You can do that with YouTube. Yes, you, you can. You can do that and also with the streaming services. Of course you can. Maybe if, if, if you get a record deal, Major, uh -huh. then you're gonna get what you need, what 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 for your work. But if you get your own record label, sure, maybe you can get better deals. Well, possibly you can, but the deals that are on offer at the moment aren't. You know, I think the the piece of the pie that musicians are getting at the moment, I don't think it's enough. It's too small. Sure. So, but I agree that I mean I think that it's the future and that's where it's going. It's the legal alternative. It's absolutely it's downloading for free. Absolutely, I think it's about education. I think it's about saying to people, look, you know, let's be fair here. You know, let's you know, if you're going to use music, pay for. But not. But I think that you know, people. Uh, it's not really about the people who are kind of consuming it in a way. It's about the the companies who are controlling the consumption on the internet. YouTube, Spot, these big companies. So it's their responsibility to pass it on to musicians. And I think that musicians are having to lobby uh, these companies now. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's almost like workers fighting for their rights. I mean, I, I, it's, you can compare it to that, I think. What do you think, old Joe? Uh, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, uh, if, you're, if, if you have your own label, if you're an indie, really small label, the deals you get with those companies are not great. They know, they think, well, they just want to have their music heard, so let's squeeze them, you know? Yeah, they use the argument, just put your music here, you're yeah. going to get known. Yeah, exactly, they do. You see that happening a lot, you know? It's, it's like the pay, for, pay to play thing. The thing that annoys me um, is venues that do pay to play. The where they ask pay bands, to play. They ask bands yeah. to pay money for tickets. I, that, I don't like that. I think if someone com comes and does some work at your venue, you should pay them, you know? Even if it's, you know, a nominal fee, you shouldn't I expect them to go and bring your audience in a way, sell tickets. I don't think that's fair on young bands. And I think a lot of young bands do that now because it's the only way they can get, you know, a get show. exposure or a show. And I feel, yeah. very, I feel very sorry for young musicians. I think we were lucky in that when we started, you could, you, there was still a bit, we, there, people still had a fair amount of respect for musicians, but I think people don't respect young musicians now. Yeah, it's, 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 good and it's, yeah, we did, I think, and I think it's very sad for young people trying to make music. It's harder for them. Bueno, tengo que traducir un poco, voy a hacer un resumen porque ya se ha ido de las manos. <laughs> Pero ha sido muy interesante. Sí, estaban con César, lo conozco, le ha preguntado que, que bueno, que. Parece que no está muy de acuerdo con las plataformas de, para escuchar música como Deezer o, o Spotify, ¿no? Y bueno, eh, Norma ha contestado que, bueno, que sí, está de acuerdo y tal, una forma de difusión, pero que, bueno, que el, un poco por resumir, el negocio en realidad se hace con, la, con, con bandas importantes, ¿no? Bandas mainstream, digamos, ¿no? Que realmente para, como yo ha dicho, para las pequeños, los sellos más independientes, ¿no? Los sellos discográficos más independientes no hay negocio en esa historia, ¿no? que sí se llevan dinero, ¿no? Parece ser que sí, ¿no? Sí, eh, igual es, ganan un porcentaje, pero que es mínimo, es ridículo. Entonces yeah. no, es un, no genera una gran ganancia. ¿no? Although I shouldn't really comment as I have some shares in Spotify. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
2,000 shares. We, we bought some. We run this, this morning to our broker. Yes. Yeah, bye. 2,000 shares in Spotify. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of different music. It's good. It's good. That's not a bad thing, but it's just about the distribution of the the money. Yeah, I don't really know the deals they offer to the companies. Yeah. I, I don't know the Sorry. Uh, could you please make the question in Spanish and in sí. English, if you don't mind? Sí, que no okay. sé realmente lo que lo, lo porcentajes que ofrecen dependiendo de las compañías, si es con una compañía o con otra. Claro. Eh, sé que no es mucho. Mm. Que ni siquiera los grandes artistas hacen mucho dinero. Ni siquiera. Okay. Con eso. Pero es una manera de distribuir a nivel mundial. Sí. It's the best way to distribute all over the world. Yeah, to, it's, it's yeah. going to get known everywhere. Absolutely. So we got to find the balance. That, that's what it is. It's the, all of this stuff is new, really. Maybe, uh, maybe the, those companies, Deezer or or Spotify, could pay a little bit of money to make the the bands going on tours. They, well, I think <laughs> they, they possibly. I mean, I, I think all this this is new. The internet's relatively no, new. No, pienso que really. quizás estas compañías podrían pagar algo de dinero para apoyar a las bandas a que fueran de de, de gira, ¿no? Ya que ganan tanto dinero, le dan yeah. poco, pero bueno, para las giras, ¿no? O los apoyaran en ese, las apoyaran en ese sentido. Se me ocurre. I, I mean, I, I would I wish that we were an app and not a band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, but working in the favor, um, what's good for artists now is that you can make a record that sounds pretty good for n nothing. You know, <coughs> you might not write a good song, it might be a terrible <laughs> song, but like when we started making records, you paid, you know, I remember paying like a thousand dollars a day in a recording wow. studio for th three weeks or something, or, and you know. Now you can make a record that probably sounds better than the one I made for thirty thousand, thirty-five thousand dollars for nothing, literally. At home with you your know? computer. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it gives people that. In the, so the the revenue stream might be sketchy, or you might not uh, get paid as accurately or as fairly as you'd like. But working in your favor is you don't you no longer have to raise thirty thousand dollars to make a record. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Bueno, yo pienso que, que ahora podemos, se puede hacer música for free, ¿no? Eh, gratis. ¿no? Puedes hacerlo desde casa, no tienes que gastar mucho dinero en hacer música, ¿no? Que realmente es un gasto que ya se quita. Que antes había que pagar miles de dólares, ¿no? Que el mismo pagó uh, thousand dollars uh, for one day. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, mil dólares por, por un día more. de estudio, ¿no? Uh, en el es curioso, estudio no sé, grabado. No sé si a los demás les parece curioso que ellos no se ponen especialmente activos hablando sobre lo que es la política ah. de la música. Es decir, cuando hablan de la música, eh, canciones o algo, hablan porque ellos son músicos y tal, pero me, y ya no es solo ellos, los parches, el día de los parches también pasó, pasó un poco eso. Cuando se habla de la política que rodea la De música, la industria, porque, ¿no? No, pero me refiero a la política... Eh, Pasa que esto yo creo que no era el sitio, porque sería cuestión de un debate eh, muy largo, porque además se están contradiciendo. Él acaba de decir que siente cierta pena por los jóvenes músicos porque no tienen espacios donde tocar, y es cierto, en comparación a cuando ellos empezaron. Pero él también ha dicho ahora mismo una cosa que es una gran verdad, que con, un, con nada puedes hacer un gran disco, sí. que antes era imposible. En realidad todo un proceso, nosotros estamos dentro de este proceso, y yo creo que hay que salirse afuera para entender que esto es que está cambiando y que ni ellos ni nosotros vamos a descubrir la fórmula secreta. Es decir, simplemente esto es un proceso y en el proceso pues, nos tenemos que ir adaptando, yo creo, lo, lo, el público, los músicos, lo, las compañías. Aquí cada uno tira para su... Sí, bueno, es un tema candente, ¿no? Claro, que es normal que, que se... Que que me llama la atención que los músicos 
claro, les afecta. Sí, sí, claro, porque son... pero que es significativo, claro. ¿no? Porque, claro. eh, no Como músicos algo... profesionales, ¿no? Eh, es su pasné, hablando de nosotros. Si, si, lo, si lo entiendo sí, perfectamente, claro. me, me llama la atención que no solo ellos, sí. que es una cosa que, que claramente eh, hay que, hay que, hay que uh, trabajar, digamos, pero que desde mi punto de vista, por, mi, por dar otra opinión más de las que se han dado, en realidad es una cuestión de, de lo que cada, cada parte quiera. Él ha dicho que los músicos tienen que ser lobby. Obviamente es fundamental. Sí. El público, el público mientras se lo regalen, mientras tengan, no que se lo regalen, porque paga por tener acceso a internet, no se lo están regalando. Pero claro, la diferencia entre pagar 10 euros o 20 euros de a o no a quien sea al mes por tener un, la, el, la conexión a internet y poder pagarte la música, a pagar 18 o 20 euros por un disco de tienes Fan Club, es que... Entonces no es una cuestión de. Es una cuestión de que esto es un proceso que, que está tardará cambiando, en, que tardará, claro. en, a, en reajustarse, digamos. Mm. Creo. <laughs> he said, <laughs> he, no, he, I, I, can, I can, what he said was, um, he said, uh, what did you have for breakfast today? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, uh, he thinks about. Um, uh, uh, well, the idea is that we're trying to get the, mm, Thank you. We are just in the process. It's not, you know, it's sí. obvious that you have your problems. You have to pay your bill. Your sure. rent is, is obvious. Yeah. And but it's obvious that if I pay, I don't know, 10 or 20 or 30 euros monthly to have uh, the option to this company to, to, to have internet at home and I have your music for free. Yeah. Is so um, uh, appealing sure. that you know it's not just it's not easy it's not yes or no it's yeah. more um, difficult sure. and all of us we are in a huge process of change absolutely I mean, yeah. we need I mean we need patience I mean it's a question of that. <coughs> you have said that you feel sorry for new bands that yeah. they don't have a place to play and it's true yeah. but this, these bands with nothing can record. An amazing album, and you can do that when you were young. Sure, um, sure. Yeah, it's, it's just uh, it's quite it's, difficult to, of course it's to say, you know, this is fair, this better. is unfair, this is. Sure, but but I agree. I absolutely agree yeah. with that. I think it's about education, and I think it's about saying to people, look, you know, it's not really cool to if someone creates something, you should kind of. You know, it's like if you walk past a busker, it's kind of nice to chuck a dollar in his, yeah. his hat, you know? It's the same thing, you know, it's like it's... You're not it's, a beggar. You're yeah, a exactly. <laughs> you, just, you, know, it's, you know, and I think... Um, uh, yeah, I just think it's about educating people and thinking, uh, that's a good thing to do. It's a good thing, you, you know, it's, you're being... It's not, I think it's not a question of education, it's a question of you, as an artist, you have to create your lobby, you have said. Mm -hmm. And we are the customers, we have to be lobby too. I mean, it's, it's just not waiting that final solution for me. Yeah, yeah. It's like no, if you are living in a community, yeah. you are not waiting that your neighbor <coughs> is going to fix your, you know, your, the problem in the, I don't know, in the water or whatever. Sure. It's, it's more like an active <coughs> yeah. position from everybody, not just you. Yeah, sure, of or course it is. And like I say, it's, this is, I like I said earlier, this is all new. Yeah. It's all new. We don't, I mean, we're in a new age here. The internet has completely changed the world. When I was, it's, when, when I, way back in the day, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, but when I, when I when, uh, would go to Canada to visit my wife's family 15 years ago, I mean, I would go there and it was almost like I would, you know, I could call back to the, the other guys in the band in Glasgow or I could, but you, I kind of felt as though I'd separated or something. Or when we went on tour, I remember the first time we were on tour and someone had a mobile phone. <laughs> and it was like a brick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we could barely get reception, but I remember being really, ex Whoa, people were really yeah. excited by that. So, uh, so yeah, so that we're, and that's only sort of 20 years ago, right? And 15 years ago, there was no internet. It was sketchy. You could, if you wanted to watch something on the internet, be a tiny little but you can uh, yeah exactly that, yeah <laughs> <laughs> now, now our sex tape that was, that was yeah the first uh, yeah our sex tape hasn't come out yet we've yeah. been uh, we've had our lawyers yeah. working on that to stop that being released but at some point it may come out <laughs> now how can we monetize that uh, yeah yeah but yeah so it's, it's the world's changing all the time and it's it's exciting actually it is 
uh, technology has made the world an, a, amazing and the opportunities for people to create, you're right, people make music on a laptop now and they can make videos with a phone. Amazing, that's exciting. O sea, en, en conclusión yeah. podemos decir que, que bueno, que hay que seguir esperando, que que esperando yeah. el cambio, que estamos en el proceso, ¿no? ¿Estáis de acuerdo en eso? Y que... Pero bueno, a mí me parece también interesante la, la visión que la aporta sobre que, que se trata de una, educa de, de una educación también, ¿no? What do you mean about when you say it's an educational thing? E education, yeah, as in, you know, people being aware, just about awareness. I mean, that, the education in that sense that also, you know, I, I mean, I'm making the same point as you, I think. It's about education, as you're talking about the, the global communities, educating everyone to the way that new technology works and affects people. One of my younger sister um, loves music. She's a very smart person, listens to a lot of music. If I asked her, I remember when I, I explained to her one time how little, how, what a small amount of money the band gets for a record, how much, how little, she couldn't believe it. She's like, you're kidding. The band makes eight cents when a song, per song on a record? And, she, and she's very smart and listens to a lot of music. She has no idea of the workings of the music industry. And I think there are a lot of people who think, oh, that record is, you know, uh, $17. They're charging me that for that. They're all getting rich from this. So why should I pay them? That's extortion for them to charge that much for a record. Well, if, if the common person who is a decent person realizes that maybe the band is making a, such a small fraction, that's a kind of education. Like, you know, that, that's exactly what I mean by that, yeah. Que el tipo de educación que tiene que recibir la gente respecto a esto es un poco conocer cómo funciona la industria, ¿no? El, el, el porcentaje tan pequeño que se queda el artista con respecto a la compra de un disco, ¿no? Ha hablado de que su hermana pequeña, que es muy inteligente, le encanta escuchar música y demás, pues eh, se quedó sorprendida cuando le, le dijo la ganancia que, que recibió un artista de, de, de un, respecto a la venta de un disco, ¿no? Que es ínfima, ¿no? Y, Pensó que era extorsión, ¿no? Algo así. <risa> Algún tipo de extorsión. Y bueno, que ese es el tipo de educación que él cree que hay que darle a las personas. Yo creo que el ejemplo de los flows, creo que se pueden dar un poco la expresión con un canto en los dientes, porque yo creo que ellos son las dos típicas bandas que realmente la gente que les gusta, al final la gran mayoría de esa gente se compra el disco. Ellos sí. no son Pink Floyd o Michael Jackson. O sea, la gente se va a eso, el corregir de Michael Jackson, Pink Floyd... Y todo algo, pero ellos están en un, en un escalón, grandísimas bandas, pero en un escalón muy para gente metida en la música. Que compra música. Exactamente, que compra música original. No te digo que haya gente que se descargue perdigrada. Hay de todo. Claro. Claro. Pero hay una gran mayoría de esa gente que yo estoy seguro. Que somos los fetichistas. Que son gente que compra. ¿no? Son, eh, <risa> yo, tenía, yo tenía los discos antes de, de poderse lo descargar. Claro. Exactamente, exactamente. Yo vale. o, o, o en mi caso, por ejemplo, sí, he como... tenido discos. Los he grabado y después los he comprado como un agradecimiento al artista. Claro, o sea. He thinks that uh, you both um, uh, form part of, uh, of the kind of bands that uh, your audience uh, buy your music because it's a special, like a fetish. <laughs> yeah, like definitely. they want to, to have, or they appreciate your work uh, so good that they, they buy your. In, in, in a way of say thank you, you know, for your work they buy. And in, in the, some ways, your records. In some ways, so I, you're lucky because of this. Mm -hmm. Plus, I know my audience. I don't know so about Norman so much, but for my band, they're older people. They're you know, thirty, late twenties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> older. <laughs> who grew up in a time? <laughs> who grew up in a time when you know, not everybody understands well they understand it but they grew up in a different time when you bought music i don't download records i don't i don't do that i buy software i know so i don't i know so many people who st you know download software illegally i wouldn't i've never done it i because i'd be a hypocrite if i did that you know uh and so i think my audience and probably our audience are a, a group of people who still pay 
you know. But my, you know, teenagers, your daughter's 18, right? But, you know, my, my daughter uses my iTunes account, actually. So she pays. Gave, a, a few years ago, she's 18 now, but a few years ago I gave her a big mistake. I told her my password for my iTunes account, so she buys. So every day, every, occasionally I'll look on there, like, when did I buy, like, fucking Wu-Tang Clan record or, you know, or whatever or you know like um, what else or you know like so I've got uh, but she's into she um things like uh, uh, oh god what's his name um uh, kid in London just now um and I think he's the called, guitar player no it's just terrible <laughs> what's his name bug no kid something kid uh, no no a kid hasn't like kid, but oh it's like a kind of kid, it's a kind of rapper guy. Anyway, I've got lots of music in my collection now that I'm like, wow. Wow, when I think about <laughs> this. <laughs> but would you, would you imagine that some of the people in her group of friends download music without paying? Oh, absolutely, they, of course they do, yeah. Because that's how they that's how it up. works, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, when, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, you called everybody's parents Mr. and Mrs. My son, seven years old, calls everybody by their first name. You know, <laughs> they never talk like that. It's just how you're we brought up. Yeah. Times, you know. Yeah. Okay. You're right, sí, Mr. Habla un poco de, de cómo han cambiado los tiempos, ¿no? Eh, cuando era pequeño, todo el mundo le, a las personas mayores les trataba de señor y señora, ¿no? Y ahora su hijo pequeño llama a todas las personas mayores por su nombre de pila, ¿no? hace referencia un poco al cómo han cambiado los tiempos y, y bueno que pertenece a una generación de personas que, que compran música ¿no? que, que somos un poco los que estamos entre los 30 y, y los 50 ¿no? y que tenemos esa educación claro de, de comprar música Creo que en todas las reuniones que hemos hecho estamos sí. tratando el cambio de, de el cambio que estamos experimentando ahora como si fuera algo novedoso y realmente creo que en la historia de la música ya ha pasado antes, porque cuando no existían las grabaciones, había millones de bandas, y supongo que cuando nacieron eh, las primeras, no sé cuándo nacieron las primeras, Salvador supongo que esa era más el vinilo de piedra o no sé. No, 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 sigue, no, no, sigue, sí, sigue, no, no. sigue, sigue hablando. Es que ahí también supongo que, que el cambio, imaginaros, o sea, sí. para hacer una fiesta necesitabas la banda, sí o sí, necesitabas el músico. Sí, 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 es un problema más militar que un problema industrial. Porque hasta ahora el paradigma era un, o sea, era como mainstream, era el camino de otra forma de comercializar la música. Ya hablamos de una época reciente, ¿no? o más o menos reciente, pero ahora el paradigma es múltiple. Y eh, a todos, desde a los jóvenes que, que acceden a la música muy fácilmente, en internet, a veces, a veces muy superficialmente porque hay mucha cantidad y esa cantidad está generando un contacto demasiado epidémico sobre la música. Y de ahí yo hasta nosotros, que somos veteranos ya y que somos que todavía compramos, esa multiplicidad, esa forma tan variada, nos está costando aceptar. Y eso yo creo que no solamente es un reflejo de la industria, también es un reflejo del aspecto creativo de la música, donde el mainstream antes, donde las formas, donde las corrientes, los modelos, los 70, 60, el, el sonido hippie, tal cual, o sea, el punk, el 90, la new wave, el, el, el techno y tal, es, eso ha cambiado, eso, pero no ha cambiado de una forma espontánea, sino que lo ha hecho eh, de una forma eh, eh, que refleja exactamente el cambio de la sociedad. La música no es algo aislado que trabaje, ni el arte es algo aislado que trabaje por, por biorritmo, so, yo creo que es independiente, sino que todo forma parte de eso. Y, y hoy la vida es mucho más, está mucho más ramificada en todos los sentidos. Todos los seres humanos están, evidentemente, por la cuestión de Internet como elemento fundamental. Pero, pero todo eso ha generado también una realidad de modelos musicales, de misturas musicales, de contactos musicales. Y la industria es un reflejo de eso. The industry is, is like this, a reflective of how we think and how we live and how we buy. 
para hacer música de internet también hay que, también hay que pagar, siempre hay que pagar. Siempre hay que pagar. Se está replanteando. Ese es el momento de, de que se replantea el reparto. Pero, pero la comprensión de la música de la industria, yo creo que es pareja a la comprensión de la música como arte. Y, y yo creo que se analiza un poco ahora mismo en qué, mundo se encuentra, en qué momento se encuentra toda la historia de la música. Ya no hablo solamente del pop o del rock, sino porque somos, tenemos ese, ese, ese punto egocéntrico ¿no? que solamente nos no, no, no acerca a lo que nos gusta, pero hay muchísimas formas musicales, muchísimos estilos en, 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 en todos los continentes que están haciendo cosas muy interesantes. Pues esa, esa combinación y esa desaparición del mainstream, del camino central, que decía, ¿qué te gusta la música? Pues tienes que comprar un tocadisco, tienes que comprar un vinilo, tienes que comprar poner poste de actualización. Ese método se ha acabado. Y, y yo creo que a todos nos está costando entender que ya no hay método, sino que cada uno tiene su propio camino, es la propia convivencia que tenemos ahora de, de, de los que compramos discos con los que, con los que yo tengo que hacer lo que vestimos ahí, con los que siempre utilizo de ejemplo, porque por aquí está el sobre el radio y él compra discos y le queda todo esto y a mí si no, me dice que soy un friki. Okay. Yo creo que es una visión muy negativa de lo, como nos está afectando la, el internet a los artistas y a mí me parece justo todo lo contrario. Yo ahora como compositor me estoy beneficiando de unas cosas que hace 10 años no podía y es que yo ahora puedo escuchar un disco de cualquier parte del mundo. Y antes tenía la industria que llegar hasta mí de manera imposible para poder escribir un disco de Rusia o de China. He thinks that the internet is a very positive thing. It's like defending... Yeah. Norman, sorry for the... Oh, that's okay. No, no, it's fine. We need some Spanish. Yeah. Oh, you do. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And Joe's gone off to, to the bathroom there. Ahora comentaba lo que estaba hablando. Sí, le estaba un poco diciendo de qué iba la cosa. Entiendo lo que él acaba de decir a la Inbox, totalmente de acuerdo. Pero yo estaba, anoche antes de salir para Cádiz, para el concierto de ellos, estaba en mi habitación cómodamente, en mi sillón, eh, disfrutando de, 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 de mi vinilo. De, o sea, eso es un placer que nosotros sabemos que... Es de fe, es de vinilo, de ello, ¿no? Claro, tío, es un placer ahí que sí, sí. poner un vinilo, darle Just la vuelta. Que, o sea, eso concert, es algo que es un de cultura musical, que es de los coches, no se conforman con un sonador, que le compras un Ferrari, ¿no? I am agree with the, with the internet and all this uh, stuff of uh, spreading the, the music, but I enjoy being doing my uh, yeah. 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 Que no, no tiene ya ese, ese, ese baño de rebeldía, de, de, de aspecto social, de aspecto cultural, político, que tenía antes. Y yo a las nuevas generaciones veo que no le interesa el rock. O que le interesa de una forma muy... Oh, sure, yeah. Now the is different. Now the young people are interested in, in other things. Yeah, sure. Yeah, idealism. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's true. Yeah. 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 Como tú dices, Miguel, como dice Miguel, eh, no, no, no necesita a nadie, sino que puede, a través de internet puede ser el, el, el mayor especialista de flamenco de, del mundo. Entonces, es, es, ese, 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 ese entorno cultural se ha diluido. Existe, pero, pero es universal. Y yo creo que eso es lo que está transformando toda, no solamente la visión industrial que estaba, estaba comentando, sino también la visión creativa. Pero Salvador, perdona, yo creo que lo que tú has dicho es que el mainstream, por ejemplo, lo años 50 o 60, claro, el mismo Peter y ahora es Shakira. Ahora puedes encontrar un experto en flamenco en Madagascar, por ejemplo. Se cree que eso es, pero eso es. Claro, de ellos, por desgracia, yo siempre digo, lo de ellos es algo que está ahí, pero son los soterrados y si tú te metes en los soterrados, 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 te metes en los
te rodeas de la gente, músicos, gente metida en música, eh, su grupo te llega de boca a boca. Su grupo no sale en la tele. No te la ponen en información, en un informativo. Si tienes Japan, que haber un disco. You, you can... Va a salir el disco de Shakira o el disco de. Have information about your because of the mouth. No, word to mouth. You know information. No, word to mouth. Word of 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 mouth. Bueno, no, pero, no, eso, pero, pero ¿qué ocurre? Pero lo que ocurre, ¿Qué? claro, el, el, tú me estás hablando del mainstream y tenemos que diferenciar el mainstream de hace 40 años. En España, quizás, en Inglaterra o América, ¿sabes? No sé. Tú estás en TV, pero en España no. No, porque yo voy a ver en TV, en inglés, ¿sabes? Para mí es una mierda. Me gustaría que ponerse la estética de esta música hacia donde interesa, hacia un aspecto de consumo fácil. Eso tiene ya una explicación de nuestro Pero hoy todo vive y todo sobrevive, en muchos casos en el ámbito musical, sobrevive más que vive eh, a la vez. Y, y, y es en esa multiplicidad está no el presente, está el futuro. O sea, habrá gente que compremos, seguimos comprando el vinilo, 180 gramos, edición doble, amarillo. Some things that in that multiplicity is the future. There's people who buy the vinyl and people who download and in that multiplicity is the, is the future. I think it's the present, actually. It's the present. You know, it's yeah. as well, yeah. We are living in this. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have to <laughs> share this in a peacefully way. Peaceful way. Uh, sure, peaceful. Definitely, I'll just fight one. <laughs> <laughs> Una pregunta un poco personal con personal no, no, y un poco canción. fuera, ¿no? Sobre eso. Venga, sí, vamos a cambiar. Y que cuente lo que <ríe> quiera contar, ¿eh? Pero vale. hay una leyenda urbana uh -huh. que dice que cuando tenéis que la grabó de King, se lo pasaron muy bien. Y que fue un disco, bueno, que ellos reniegan y tal, pero que fue un poco como, bueno, vamos a grabar esto y que se llegue a contar una experiencia. Para Norman, ¿no? A personal question for okay. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This be If you want to answer, you're free to answer or not. Okay, sure. He said, <laughs> uh, there's a, a, an urban uh, his legend that says that uh, when you record a uh, King, the King album, yeah. you have a lot of fun. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe you want to share with us. Uh, the, the story of that record, yeah, the King. Yeah. yeah. We were making our Bandwagon-esque album and we had uh, a day off, but we had nowhere to go. So we stayed in the studio and we thought, well, let's just, you know, have a few beers and we'll make a bit of music. Let's have a bit of fun. So we did things like we would, let's all swap instruments. I'll play drums, I'll play bass. So we did that and we kind of jammed out some music. And then, uh, and then we took that music and then we flipped the tape machine, the recorder over, and then we spun that backwards and played some more things over that. And then we said, well, that's a track, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then, then we, we, as the day progressed, we said, let's do some covers. So we covered uh, Madonna, Like a Virgin. I mean, all pretty drunk. And we just all played and put that. And, and we did quite a few tracks. And so, um, uh, just for a bit of fun. And so by the end of the day we had, we said, okay, this is our, our new album, we'll call it The King. So we made it the album in, inside the other album. And then we were speaking to Alan McGee, creation, and we said, Alan, can we put this out? Could you do like maybe 500 copies of this for, you know, just for a laugh and we can stick this out? And, and creation pressed about 5,000 of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're like, oh, no. um, and so it was just really something that was a bit of fun um, that um, was released. That's the, the story of that. Um, but we... Um, yeah, um, just to kind of random series of songs that, but uh, do you know to be honest with you uh, uh, um, I think we were just I mean we were definitely expressing ourselves that was that's part of the band I, 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 I can like that record I think it's pretty good fun um, we did on the next record that we made we tried to make the king too uh, <laughs> and we, we have lots of outtakes we did we did a thing and this was a good experiment right we said okay the, th the other members of the band had to pick a song for you to, so say it was, I, mean, I would pick a song for you to cover, okay? 
so a cover version, but you couldn't listen to the song. You had to do it all from memory, and you had to play every instrument on it. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got some of these. I think we've, there's a good version of Jerry singing the song Relax by Frankie Goes to Hollywood. <laughs> like he did, and I, I like the way he did it. He did a really relaxed version, so it's really slow, and he goes, relax. You know, it's really very <laughs> relaxed. <laughs> um, and so maybe someday those will see, you know, be on a record. Or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry. Yeah. So what, what's hap what happened with The King 2? Well, The King 2 is still in the can. Okay. In, the, in, the, in the creation vaults somewhere. Bueno, que aquel día tenían el día libre y decidieron reunirse en el estudio y estuvieron, estuvieron ahí tocando y decidieron grabar y demás. Y con cervezas y demás y bueno lo primero que hicieron creo que tocar he entendido que tocaron y, y le rebobinaron la cinta y tocaron otra vez encima entonces bueno ya ahí salió bastante <risa> luego decidieron hacer versiones y hicieron el like a virgin de madonna que ya estaba un poco borracho a esa altura <risa> pero que bueno <risa> y bueno y, y en fin que así salió el disco no que al final del día de, dijeron tenemos un disco no y que se lo llevaron a Alan McGee, ¿no? que es el de Creation Records, y, y bueno, que, que el tipo les dijo que... Les dijeron, bueno, le hemos hecho esto, a ver qué tal, vamos a hacer... ¿Cuántas? ¿Cinco mil copias creo que ha dicho? Que se le hicieran 500 copias. 500 copias. Y el otro día hizo... ¿Cuántas copias copias en la creación? Creo que creo que ellos han hecho más de 10.000 copias. Quite a lot more copies. than we expected. You know, <laughs> no. Más de lo que esperaba. I, I, Raymond, with well, the guitar player in our band, uh, tells me the, the very remnants of the story that, that he, walk, he was walking through Glasgow and he, he walked into HMV or something and there was a big display of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and he phoned me, he didn't use a mobile phone, he had to go to a telephone box. <laughs> <Hello>. <laughs> of course, back then, before the internet. Um, so but you yeah. discover. So we, we didn't know that they were going to press so many copies of it. Um, but you discovered uh, how many copies uh, yeah. accidentally? Well, yeah, but yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay. We were like, wow. Okay. <laughs> so, descubrí accidentalmente, ¿no? Creo que fue a comprar cerveza y de repente vio que había 10.000 copias del disco y se quedó. The band was in its adolescence then. <laughs> Estaba en su adolescencia, ¿no? Todavía la banda y. So we were, we were rebelling, rebelling against our parents, the record label of their whoever, you know. <laughs> Y ellos nos podrían, no sé, de lo que han producido, de las canciones que han hecho ellos, no en James Van Club o en o los, o los Penny Rock o en otro grupo, si tienen alguna canción de la que ellos consideren que, que digan, coño, esto es un, una obra de arte o casi. Si tienen algún tipo de, can, de, de canción de las suyas que consideren que son... Ahora más extras, ¿no? Porque yo, yo, sí lo, yo sí lo considero. Tú sí, yo también. Quería claro. saber si ellos lo piensan. Maybe, uh, ¿Alguna cosa wants... de todo lo contrario? También, bueno, también. Ah, y lo contrario, ¿no? <risa> vale. <risa> They want to know if uh, you consider uh, some... Uh, some... If you consider uh, of, uh, of your own work, you consider any song of a great masterpiece or oh, no. oh, on the, oh, on the opposite, okay? Yeah. Do, 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 what see, songs you consider? Well, to, I have to say, Matt, this is a, I think to listen to your own music is masochistic. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. <laughs> <laughs> I always say it's like looking at yourself naked in a mirror. I don't recommend it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, about the, what's the, explanation, the explanation of uh, uh, why Teenage Fan Club, the name, this name? Oh, the name oh, you, we wanted, well, when we started the band, we thought there were lots of groups with what we considered to be pretentious names. Um, orchestral maneuvers in the dark, Spandau Ballet, we thought those were kind of pretentious. So we wanted to come up with the stupidest, meaningless name that we could, and uh, we thought Teenage Fan Club kind of worked. But none of us were teenagers, and uh, and we just thought it sounded kind of... Or fans of teenagers. Or fans of teenagers, yeah, or, yeah, or <laughs> members of a club. <laughs> so um, we just wanted something that was, didn't mean anything at all, that doesn't, you know. Um, sadly, when we signed with Geffen in the in the US, they took the name literally, and they really tried to market the band to teenage girls. I mean, it was really mm. that that kind of dumb. But um, yeah, we just wanted something that didn't mean anything. 
And how did you get your name out <laughs> of the Prince Spillers? Sí, eh, bueno, que el, el nombre en aquella época había unos nombres un poco how do you say the... pretencioso. pretencioso, exacto. Eran como Spandau Ballet y tal, el nombre un poco pre... y que ellos querían pensar en un nombre algo simple que no fuera nada pretencioso, un nombre sencillo y bueno, que se les ocurrió Tienes fan club, pero que no tiene nada que ver con que tengan ningún club, ni fueran adolescentes, ni nada de eso. ¿no? La segunda pregunta, tiene un poquito de mala leche, explícaselo, pero llevo también muchos años haciendo ya. Eh, eh, llevo muchísimos años preguntándome si tenéis fan club alguna vez sacará un disco mejor que Songs from Nothing Britain. Llevo esperándolo okay. muchísimos años. He's, uh, he's waiting if you, uh, Tienes fan club, are going to, to, to play a, a best record than uh, songs from the north oh, of Britain. Right, yeah, well, we'll, we'll keep trying our best. Seguimos intentando lo mejor que podemos. Well, we're making a, I'm making a new one at the moment, so I must be recording at the moment, so, uh, so it should be finished, uh, released next year. Están grabando ahora mismo y estará listo oh, el año que viene. <laughs> yeah, it's <good. laughs> so it's, I, I, yeah, it's turning good. <laughs> no, I, but I don't, I don't know, yeah, you just... You You'll, you'll, we do our, uh, like we always do, you just write the songs and hopefully no sé si será mejor, they're pero good. Solo escribo canciones. We, ha, we had a good team recording it. We recorded it in a studio in the south of France. It was great. Had an old EMI desk and it was in the, um, it was in the near Mount Ventoux. Fantastic wine and good food. So it was a really good experience. Yeah. And you can hear that sometimes. If it's a, like for it, when you make a record, if it was a lot of fun doing it, you know, In my, in my, uh, what's the word, experience, if it was a very good time, it's a better record. Si pasas un un buen tiempo, no, haciéndolo es un buen es un buen disco. Luego yo tengo una pregunta, una pregunta para yo que él tiene un sello discográfico, ¿no? Si pone algún tipo de filtro a la banda que que entra su sello y luego para los dos que si hay una banda actual que le guste mucho y si hay gente joven y About your record label, uh, what kind of um, filter? No, I don't know how to say. Uh, you, In Spanish. ¿Qué filtro pones? O sea, para para if if a new band want to oh to sign a deal. Get signed. With a would I put them out on my label? Yeah. Is that the question? Yeah, if you if you probably uh, I don't release so far. It, we've only released my albums and. Uh, Uh, do you, a British uh, artist, John Cunningham. I don't know if you know his music. Okay. Fantastic. So I put out his records. But to be honest with you, um, I have a partner who I own my record label with, and the stuff I do keeps us pretty busy. We're only two people in, at the label, so. No, but I, I think oh, that oh. you don't. No. I don't understand. I don't, no, I don't explain <laughs> very well. I didn't explain very well. If you, uh, what kind of, um, what's the word? Advice? No advice. Uh, if a new band want to sign a deal with your record label, yeah. what kind of records is, um, uh, you know, the... Oh, requisites. what kind of band would I put out on my label yeah. if I was going to? Yeah. I'd have to love the music because it's a labor of love. You, you don't, <laughs> as an indie label, I don't think any, many indie labels are thinking this is a great record to sell, I'll make a lot of money. You just don't even think about that. I wouldn't put out a record unless I really loved it. That's it. So the, 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 the band just have to love the music or something? Or the, I don't know the if band, I'm understanding no, your question. No, we don't understand. <laughs> Maybe, if you can help me. Sí, que bueno, el, es un sello que parte del amor hacia la música, ¿no? Y que en realidad que tiene que gustarte la música y que eso es todo en realidad. Más o menos, okay. Y bueno, la otra pregunta era que, que grupos actual nueva. Is there a new band of young people that you like mostly lately? Um. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, you put your attention. Yeah, um, yeah, I do like. Uh, I do listen to new music from time to time. Um, what have I heard recently that I liked? 
Um, I haven't listened to a new record in a, a, a year, probably. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. Just because, uh, honestly, I, t I stay home and take care of my son. I don't have a lot of time to listen. At night I fall asleep. So I'll hear music. <laughs> I, don't, I don't seek out new music. I just, I just don't do it anymore. Yeah, um, People, and I could just make up an answer and say, oh, I love this record by these guys. I haven't heard of a new record in probably six to eight, ten months. So there you go. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to lie to you. Ningún disco nuevo de una banda nueva en, en los últimos 10 meses se ha ocupado de cuidar a su hijo y luego que ha rendido. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I can very often be in a similar position, but there is a yeah. 18 year old there, daughter. There is, I do have an 18 year old daughter, and there's a band that I, I like just now from, from Washington called La Luz. Uh, La Luz, L U Z. Okay. La Luz. They're all girls from Washington, Washington. State. They've, they've got a couple of singles where they're really... Washington really, State? Yeah, Washington State. Okay. It's in the US. Okay. La Luz. They've got their own... Mm -hmm. one. Oh, hello. That's him. Thanks for the plug. La Luz. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But they're, they're, they're a pretty good band. They're in a situation similar to me, because I have a daughter of 18 years old, but I've heard of a band that is only from the state of Washington, in the Washington uh, United States, and it's called La Luz. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, yeah. The, but there, I mean, I think there's all, always great music around. Things recently, I, that, I like the real estate record, Re real estate U.S. band. They were, I thought they were good. real estate. Yeah, records? yeah, yeah. Um, and Does I, the label have a, a good band? Do you think? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I think um, Domino are always putting Domino. good stuff. But there's lots of small labels now. Mm -hmm. I always have to um, give uh, my Eros Childs, who I play with, and Johnny. He has a new album. Eros Childs, which got, his new record's really good. Yeah, it's really good. So you como Domino y Real Estate tienen buenas bandas. One one other band, and it's the record I was talking about earlier. Oh yeah, the uh, I, I was, was a, a king. I was a king, the, from Norway, um, yeah. and I oh, made an album with me and Robin Hitchcock. That's okay. a really good album. The songs are really really good. También el, el disco del grupo de Norway que le que grabó, I Was a King, también cree que tiene buenas canciones. He thinks it's kind of similar. So they like the like yeah, they're they're wonder you like them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I just, I, oh, I've got one more. A, a band from London called The CC. Yeah, they're really good. That's a good album. They're good. I know, I know. I know. <laughs> well, do you know, one of them is from Manchester. Tensei's here from Manchester. Yeah. Maybe that's it. Le quería preguntar a Norman que si cuando tocan en directo, no sé desde cuántos años hace, pero con ellos en el escenario, no sé si es el rock manager o no sé qué persona, qué cargo tiene. Hay un señor con el pelo blanco, que no lo tiene muy largo, que no lo tiene corto, que da la sensación de que es como el, no sé, el tutor de ellos, ¿no? Un poco de que quién, qué ¿Quién personaje, es? qué relación tienen con él, si nada, si es simplemente el guitar George. Es que no sé qué es. He wants to know who is the, 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 the man who goes with your fan club to the live concerts. He has a George. white... George, George Borowski. George Borowski. He's, a, he's amazing. George was Pixie's guitar tech. We, we played with Pixie's. He's from Manchester as well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he, he's he's uh, he's an amazing guy. We played with Pixies and George. Uh, normally, when you play with uh, with big bands, you don't get treated very well by their crew. You know, they say, "Yeah, put your amp there." And and when we played with Pixies with big stadium shows, but what is his, his role? Uh, well, he was guitar tech. He um okay. yeah, the guitar, guitar tech. So basically, we played with Pixies, though, and normally you would think that people, yeah, put your stuff there and get, your, get off, you know, the main band are coming. And we set our amps on stage, and George walked up to me and he said, Hello, mate, I'm George. Would you like a cup of tea? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, thanks. And so, uh, yeah. So, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. He's a great guy. Every, I mean, he's really he a great guy. He always wants to drink tea. Uh, do you know Darius Straits? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. He said, I'm guitar George. He is. He is. He and Mark Knopfler met George. George had a crazy guitar, and Knopfler 
um, wrote the song, that line in the song about him. He also teched for Meatloaf as well. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, he, and he played, he played, he, played he, he said, oh yeah, Meatloaf had him on stage playing guitar because the guitar player broke his arm or something. And George said, yeah, I'll do it. And he was up playing with <laughs> his Meatloaf. He's done some amazing, <laughs> amazing things, has George. He's like a great, great guy. Oh, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, he's, 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 a, he's a real character. He played guitar and construir guitar. Yeah, he, he, was up here in the, he played in a new wave band called The Out. And they had a song called Who Is Innocent? And we toured with Yola Tengo. And, and Ira Kaplan was talking to George. And, and George said, oh yeah, I was in the out. And I was like, I've got that single. You, you're the out. <laughs> you know, and George was like, I'm the out. And I was like, oh man, wow. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, what a guy. <laughs> Hablado de un, ahora de un encuentro entre Aira Kaplan de Yo la tengo, ¿no? Y que cuando descubrió quién era, ¿no? Que se sorprendió bastante. Bueno, ¿Alguna pregunta más? Yo quería preguntar más? a Yo porque a, a mí me, me gustan mucho los Permis Brothers y Víctor Bello, todos esos proyectos. Pero con quien yo empecé a conocer su música fue con Scott Mountain Boys, que fue su primer grupo, que a mí me parece uno que sigue siendo todavía uno de los secretos mejor guardados de la música americana. Un grupo que publicó muy pocos discos, dos, creo, y desapareció. Y, y me gustaría conocer algo más de la historia de School Mountain Boys. Es un gran fan de School Mountain Boys. Él piensa que es un secreto de la música americana. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. He thinks that it's a very big secret of the American music, the music in the United States, uh, the School Mountain Boys. Oh, I see. Thank so you. he wants to know. Uh, algo sobre el grupo, porque no, porque about the, the band, no about this band. No when you finish, when you finish that, that band, why? Well, it's we made a new record. Did you know that? Así, Esta, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know, I know. Why did it? Well, we started the band. Um, we were all living in the same town, and uh, I was in graduate school, and another guy, another guy in the band, was also a graduate student, and we just it, like like a lot of things. We just did it for fun. We weren't really thinking about, you know, being a band. And then it just kind of grew, and we did some recording. And we made two records. We released, there was a, an indie a small label in the town where we lived. And um, we released one album in January and the second album in February, <laughs> went back to back. And then from that, we, uh, we just, a lot of record labels came and wanted to sign us. And we signed to Sub Pop Records in America and we made an album for them. And about a year into playing with the Pernice, uh, yeah, a year into uh, the beginning, Mountain. yeah, the Scud Mountain Boys, my brother and I started to do a side project, the Pernice Brothers. And <coughs> after a while I realized that um, the Scud Mountain Boys, which I, I enjoyed the music a lot and I, I liked the playing with the guys who were good friends of mine, but it was pretty, con it was pretty limiting. I, you know, it was a very specific sound Um, and so I wanted to do more things, orchestration, more guitars, full drum. And uh, so I, I, I left the band just because I didn't want to just focus on the Scud Mountain Boys. I thought it was too narrow for what I wanted to do. And do you want to fill them in and then I'll take it to the next, I'll give you the next okay. part. <laughs> que bueno, que como empezaron, fue, grabaron creo que dos discos en el mismo año y bueno, es, fue como muy rápido todo el, el primer año y, y las discográficas creo que enseguida también les llegaron, ¿no? Le, quisieron firmar con ellos y demás, pero que bueno, que en realidad él dejó el grupo porque se veía muy limitado, no quería, no quería tocar, mmm, veía que el estilo musical era muy limitado y necesitaba más orquestación, más, más guitarras, más... Y bueno, había empezado a tocar ya en el segundo año de estar con los Scoot Mountain, empezó a tocar con su hermano y ya dio como otra vez de escape, ¿no? Y con los Pernice Brothers y por eso ya... And so then the band, I uh, left the band and I wrote all the songs and sang uh, uh, like most of them. So in a, in a way, the band split up. And we weren't, we, the other guys in the band were pretty unhappy about that. So we didn't speak for 15 years, not one, not one word between the band and me, not one. And, uh, and then a friend of ours died, who was, you know, a, friend, a good friend of ours who was a fan of the band. He, uh, he passed away and... Uh, 
I started thinking about it, and I thought maybe we should play at his memorial, at his like they had a, a memorial service, mm -hmm. and uh, but it, we didn't do it. And then I just kept thinking about it more, and I, I never ever listened to my own records ever, and I. Uh, I went back and I, I listened to the three Scud Mountain Boys records and I said, hmm, you know, it's not great, but it's pretty good. And, uh, um, and then... So like, uh, Please Mr. Please? Oh yeah, you know yeah. Oh, I do. It's beautiful. Oh, My thanks. favorite song of Scud Mountain Boys. So, and then we just decided, I just got in touch with them again after 15 years and, and everybody wanted to play and we got, we played a show or I, again, I had a solo show and I invited a couple of the guys to come up and play, and we did. And it felt like we never stopped playing. It was just right there. Mm -hmm. So then we said, let's make a record. We started almost immediately. And that's it. Bueno, que... Eh, <coughs> a ver, estuvo como 15 años sin... Bueno, él de, a causa de que él dejara el grupo, el, la banda se disolvió so porque él era quien escribía la mayoría de las canciones y las componía. Entonces la banda se disolvió. Esto hizo que el resto de compañeros se sintiera muy, muy triste, ¿no? Mm. Entonces ha estado como 15 años sin mantener ni una palabra con, con, esta, con el resto de la banda hasta que uno de los componentes murió. Y entonces él quiso hacer algo en, plan, en su memoria y demás, pero al final no lo hizo, ¿no? También dice que no, nunca escucha sus discos, pero que esta vez, pues, sí, a causa de esto, escuchó los tres discos que tiene de, de Scoot Mountain Boys y, y que esto lo hizo, no sé, le hizo avivar un poco otra vez las ganas de tocar con ellos y que lo llamó para tocar en un show y que fue como si nunca hubieran dejado de tocar, ¿no? Que fue muy mágico, que fue enseguida, ¿no? Cuando empezaron a tocar. Y bueno, esto ha sido... Oh, sí. And maybe sí. just to say in general, um, being able to reconcile with them. they were my close friends very close but we lit, we did not speak and um i always think that because of music then because of the music i got to talk to my have my friends back so i think it's one of the best things that ever happened to me in music you know um is to have the opportunity to be friends again with people who met, who really meant a lot to me. I, you know, loved like brothers, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that was just a really uh, great experience. So, music's given me a lot of things. So. La música, gracias a la música he recuperado a estos amigos sí. que son como hermanos para él, ¿no? Que, eh, que fueron muchos años sin hablarse, pero que, que bueno, que gracias a la música otra vez, eh, ahora mismo son grandes amigos y... Y bueno, agradece a la música por esto, ¿no? Para que otra vez pueda tenerlos de vuelta. Quería preguntarle a Norma si una de las la, la, la bandas nuevas, al menos aquí en España, siempre intentan tras, subir un poco, en, de, trascender a, a, a un mayor público, teloneando a, a grupos, digamos, extranjeros, cuando vienen de gira o algo, una ocasión de conseguir promo. Y yo recuerdo que yo vi a ellos en Madrid en el 92 teloneando a Nirvana, cuando estaban mm, eh, promocionando el disco rosa, el Van Ganowesca. Entonces, quiero, tengo la curiosidad si, es, si, 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 si es, efectivamente eso, es decir, si en su caso eso funcionó, si telonear a una banda como Nirvana en aquel momento, le abrió, supuso algo en su trayectoria en el sentido de ser más conocido o si realmente eso tampoco es tan importante. Vale. Si me ayudáis con así se te lo sí, sí. <risa> Tocar <risa> antes, ¿no? Sí, es tu open. Open the concert, ya. Yeah. Uh, he, he saw you in Madrid. Yeah. Uh, when you played, uh, when did you, you played before Nirvana. Oh, you look too I young. <laughs> 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 So, uh, do you think that this helps to a band, uh, a new band? Because in Spain, it's a, a huge thing. A new band always wants to play, yeah, you open know, a concert with a, a recognized. You know, ge generally, generally, I would say no. But I have to say that we, as teenage fan club, have always done well. We've been able to come to this country a lot and play here. And I, I, I sometimes think that maybe part of it was was doing those shows with Nirvana. I think we did three shows. Um, 
Um, but generally, um, I, I don't think it really helps bands. We, we, we toured with Radiohead in, in America on the OK Computer Tour. And the, the reason that we did the tour was because they asked us to do it. Because of? Because Radiohead asked us yeah. ah, personally. Okay. I think, uh, because I don't really think, but what generally happens, and the tour was fun, and they're really nice guys, and we had fun touring with them. But what happens is uh, that you go on stage, yeah, and some of the audience are there. Some most people are out buying merch. Mm. People are not yours. Uh, because <laughs> right. yeah. yes, in, in front of the stage. Oh, wait yeah. for the big band. The same, yeah, on. they're waiting for Radiohead, uh, yeah. and that's so. I don't, and I don't think the the success by association thing works. Yeah. Yeah. Radiohead fa fans aren't going to buy our record because I'm friends with Tom York. You know, they don't care. So what if you're friends with Tom York? You know, it doesn't work that way. Uh, <laughs> and, and so, so that's why I always th thought it ironic. We, we've never bought onto a tour. We, we, we're just, we wouldn't do that um, because it's a waste of money. So you're wasting your money. You may as well just flush it down the toilet before you get the plumber to come and do it. <laughs> keep some of it to it pay. Keeps, yeah, keep some of it. But yeah, it's a waste of money. It, it doesn't work. No one cares. People don't care. They paid their tip money to see the main band. And if you happen to like the sport band, great. But uh, you know, most people, or a lot of people, aren't really interested. They're just but, in their way. But like I said, I do have to say that I think the one exception for our, in our experience was doing those shows with with Nirvana. Um, I, maybe it's because they, everyone was in when we went on stage, and everyone is excited because it was Nirvana. <laughs> and they, these were the first shows that they'd done after Nevermind had broken it. I mean, it was. That in, in my experience of touring, that was the most exciting tour I've ever to witness. Maybe people to, wanted to see you as well in well, Spain. Well, there were people there. Well, uh, maybe yeah. some, but not obviously it was Nirvana. But yeah. to you, know, yeah, the, to, to witness a phenomenon like that was incredible. To be there and just watch people as soon as they kick into da 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 da, -da it's like ah. Oh, to watch thirty thousand people going crazy and see that over the course of a tour was incredible. I mean, you know, it is that, 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 you know, in a way, Kurt is kind of like the Jim Morrison of his generation, you know, this, what of. could have been, he's died at a young age, uh, made a massive impact. Mm -hmm. uh, that was amazing. He was a lovely guy, he was a really nice guy, with problems. And he couldn't <laughs> handle, he didn't handle fame, he didn't like, I think he kind of hated their fame. He didn't think they were worthy of it. You didn't think he deserved people of, but he was a, they were worthy of it. They were good people. They, you know, they were respectful people. They were conscious people. They were, you know, um, they were um, politically literate and aware. Um, and they were the kind of antithesis of all the sort of dumb rock music that had come out of the US, a lot of the hair metal that had come out of the US in the, the previous decade. So. I've, I've drank too much coffee. <risa> <risa> bueno, ¿qué, ¿qué opina? Que no, que no. Para nada ayuda a una banda que tocar antes de un grupo famoso, no. Porque normalmente piensa que la gente va a ver a la, a la banda principal, ¿no? Del cartel y o llega tarde o cuando estás tú tocando está hablando. Entonces no, no ayuda mucho para... Y tampoco tiene mucho sentido, ¿no? Que, por ejemplo, ellos hicieron una gira con Radiohead por Estados Unidos con el disco de OK Computer. Pero bueno, fue porque son amigos y, y Tom, Tom York le, le, los llamó y se lo preguntó, ¿no? Que si quería ir con ellos y demás. Pero bueno, respecto a la gira con Nirvana, que sí que fue muy grande, pues, tocar con ellos, ver eh, pues, el, la audiencia que tiene, ¿no? El público que tiene Nirvana, que tenía en su época, ¿no? En los conciertos y que era muy excitante y demás, pero... pero bueno. Played Madrid. Han bueno, hablado un poco Madrid, también Valencia, de and Bilbao, uh, Barcelona, Bilbao as well. Yeah, and Bar it was four shows in Bar Barcelona as well. Yeah, four There shows. There was a, a, a Spanish band called Sutil Bicho. The yeah, yes. Yeah. They didn't play. They didn't play. On the bill, though. It was just yeah. in the, was in the oh, ticket. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, they didn't play. I've still got the, the massive poster from the Valencia show. The, I've, still, I've got. I was looking through things, keep some things, and I found it's like, wow, it's a really enormous poster. Que Good. todavía guarda el póster del, del concierto en Valencia, ¿no? Con Nirvana. Rubbish. Lo tiene. Lo tiene. <risa> ok. Bueno, pues acabamos. Yo he pasado casi, casi dos horas. Así que nada. Eh.
Thank you, Joe. Eh, de nada. Gracias a vosotros por vuestra participación porque se hacen dos horas muy cortas, la verdad, sí. con tanta buena charla y tantas opiniones. Ha sido un placer tener a estos dos monstruos aquí en, en la Universidad de Cádiz y esperamos que el programa de del Rock siga el año que viene, en 2014, con nuevas entregas. Gracias. 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 Gracias.